let's see, the mic does appear to be working, so that's good. Um, all right, let's go ahead and call to order um, our February 2nd, 2023 <coughs> Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Commissioner Sibley? Here. Commissioner Fenster? Here. Commissioner Gayu? Here. Chairman Lang? Here. Commissioner Jacoby? Here. And Commissioner Barnard? Here. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So we do have a quorum. Um, next item on the agenda would be the approval from the December 2022 meeting. Do any of the commissioners have any comments or corrections for those minutes? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. All right, we have a motion to approve the minutes from uh, Commissioner Barnard and a second from Commissioner Jacoby. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The minutes are passed unanimously. Uh, next would be a report from the chair. So I don't have anything in particular to um, note other than uh, welcome everyone to 2023. And we do have a, a, uh, a new member, uh, Commissioner Fenster here to my right. So welcome, Commissioner. Uh, for because we do have one new commissioner, I'll, I'll do a quick little uh, intro on how comments work and the technology we have. We all remember that uh, during the meeting, if you would like to make a comment or statement, I you press uh, the tab on your microphone, which then alerts me that you need to speak. But give me a second because I have to activate your mic in order for you to be recorded and we do want uh, the mic to be on so that the recording picks it up. <clears throat> all right, that's all I have. Um, do we have uh, anything from HPC staff, Planner Schumacher? Well, hello, commissioners. I haven't been here for a while, but uh, good to see you all again. Um, I'm Brian Schumacher with city planning staff. Um, unfortunately, Jennifer's under the weather, um, so I'm filling in for her. And um, our planning director, Glenn Van Nimrigen, is had to attend an RTD meeting this afternoon, so he wasn't able to attend the meeting either. So they send their condolences. And so, fortunately, you're stuck with me. So, but uh, did want to mention a few things. Um, obviously, some of you have registered uh, for the Saving Places conference that is next week in. Older. I think there was the online and in-person options. I don't know which of those, uh, each of the commissioners that have signed up selected, but I believe my understanding, aside from Jennifer, that Commissioner Lane, Commissioner Jacoby, Commissioner Barnert, and Commissioner Sibley have all registered for the uh, conference, and I believe probably Commissioner Gayu is maybe also attending. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, understand. Um, I understand, Commissioner Lane, that you're still looking for kind of your registration information. We'll make a note of that, and I'll contact Jennifer and, and Jane to see if we can follow up on that um, and let you know tomorrow. Great, thanks. Yes, Commissioner Fenster. Yeah, I'll check and see. I believe... I'll check about the registration. If you're interested, it is next week. I believe it's February 8th through the 10th. Um, I think there's, an, like I said, it's in person. There's also an online option. I don't know all the details since I'm not attending, but uh, we can check on that and forward that information to you. I don't know if registration has closed. I believe it probably hasn't, but um, we can certainly check on that. Thank you. You bet. Sorry, I'm just taking a note here. I just shed airspace, sorry. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I did receive yesterday from Lindsay at History Colorado. She's the CLG representative coordinator. 
um, some information about funding opportunities. And I'll, if you haven't received that, we'll forward that on to the uh, commission regarding different grant opportunities. But then uh, there's also information about additional training. Besides the Saving Places Conference, I believe in February, it sounds like there's going to be two tax credit training sessions uh, for CLGs, if anybody's interested. Uh, they haven't specified a date yet, but we'll, when we get that information, we can forward that on to the commission if any of the commissioners are interested in that. Looks like there will also be restarting the CLG regional forums uh, this year. Uh, again, no dates or locations yet, but when we get that information, we'll forward that on if uh, any of the commissioners are interested in uh, attending any of those sessions. And aside from that, um, as you're probably all aware, May has typically been Historic Preservation Month, and uh, we can talk maybe a little bit about that under the retreat topic uh, discussion. So I think that's all I have to ramble on about for now. So thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Planner Schumacher from the commission? Um, I have one. Yeah. Um, are, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Unfortunately, I would put... Uh, Jennifer on the spot if she were here. So the first order, we were excited to learn last year that she was going to have some more time to dedicate to planning or to, to historic preservation because you, you, you found some planners and her first order of business was a grant application uh, for surveys. And do you have any idea if that, if there's been any progress on that? I don't, but I can certainly check with her uh, when she's back in the office. Okay. You can let her know we're going to put her on the hot seat next yeah, time. Yes, so. I will make a note of that. Uh, okay. Sorry, Thank just you. taking notes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Uh, okay. Then we'll move on to uh, our next section is uh, public invited to be heard. So this would be anyone in the audience who would like to speak to something that is not on the agenda. If you are here for an agenda item, we'll have you come up uh, during that particular time. So is there anyone in the audience that's here to speak about something not on our agenda? Seeing none, thank you. I'll go ahead and close the public invited to be heard. Um, all right, now we are on to annual business. Uh, so the first meeting of every calendar year, we need to go through and elect uh, officers, chair and vice chair, approve uh, our meeting dates and times, location, agenda posting location, and approval of bylaws. Uh, so we'll take these one at a time. The first order of business is the election of the chairperson. If there's anyone sitting here that would really love to jump up here and, and, and take this uh, position over, you are certainly welcome to. Um, if, if there isn't anyone who really loves to do this, uh, I will consent to serve again, but uh, I'm not going to get in the way of anyone who wants to do this. Red is go. Green is stop. <laughs> okay. Like my life is not hard enough already. Uh, so I will nominate Steve to be chair again. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, nomination to elect uh, Commissioner Lane as the chair, nominated by uh, get my I'm just <coughs> Commissioner Gayu and seconded by Commissioner Fenster. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, I'll not oppose. Um, all right. And then uh, vice chair. Do we have any nominations for vice chair? Commissioner Guy, who has served this role for the last couple of years, but I'm sure she'd be also happy to pass the Sorry. torch. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, the vice chair is really essentially the person who takes over this role. If I'm not here or if I need to recuse myself from some uh, portion of the hearing. Now accepting nominations. Hi, 
I nominate Commissioner Gayu to serve as Vice Chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. Second. Okay, we have a nomination from Commissioner Barnard and seconded by Commissioner Fenster to, for uh, Commissioner Gayu to serve as Vice Chair. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. Welcome back. All right. Um, approval of meeting dates and times. Our hearings are the first Thursday of every month uh, at 5 o'clock. Did anyone, uh, if, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to kind of run through the schedule, we sometimes have conflicts around the 4th of July and Labor Day. I did not see any. The 4th of July uh, week is the 6th, though it's after the holiday. I think that would be post-holiday weekend. So I don't know that we have a conflict with any of the typical dates. Does that include summer? It, it does include summer. We run every first Thursday of every every month. Um, the only reason we would not have a meeting would be if there were nothing on the agenda. Uh, occasionally, the meetings do get um, canceled for the month. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I noticed that we plan through December seventh, um, and I also noticed, obviously, that we weren't able to meet in January because it was very close to the January, I guess, because it was close to the January holidays, um, January 1st, New Year's and stuff like that. Uh, should we <clears throat> maybe take a look at January and just see uh, if we're going to be able to do that? Uh, I, I, or if we, yeah. we want to move it to maybe the second Thursday <laughs> in January I, so we don't miss a meeting? Yeah, I think, honestly, we missed it. Just because we didn't have an agenda item to discuss and we weren't prepared, I don't, I'm not sure staff was ready to dive into uh, some of the retreat deals. We have normally met on the first Thursday in January. Okay. Um, and, and I think that's something we could handle as we get closer during the year as well, since it's really technically the next calendar year. I would move then that we uh, approve the uh, dates and times as suggested. Second. Second. Okay. I've got a motion uh, from Commissioner Jacoby, and I did hear uh, Commissioner Fenster's second first, um, so that we'll have uh, all of our meetings will be on the first Thursday uh, of each month at 5 o'clock. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. That motion passes. I'm going to lump the next two in. I probably could have done the first, these three together. Uh, meeting location and meeting agenda posting location. Um, uh, Recording Secretary Yost, could you remind us where these, uh, where the posting locations are? So they're, they're, they're physically posted physically. at Town Hall, and of course they're on online. Yeah, so the official location is on the web page, and then okay. the sup supplemental is the physical location, so where you say the site. Right, okay. So the, the meeting loc our meeting location would actually be here all uh, through the year, uh, and those posting locations would be, uh, as noted, on the web and physically on the building. Uh, Do any commissioners have any comments? around those if not I'll take a motion yeah. all right uh, so we have a motion to approve the meeting location here and the meeting agenda lo posting locations as uh, currently existing the motion is from Commissioner Sibley and seconded by Commissioner Fenster all in favor please say aye aye, aye. any opposed none thank you and last um, item of our annual business is the approval of bylaws, which were included in the packet. Um, it's, it's fairly straightforward stuff, just talks mostly about things we just did. Um, anyone have any comments or questions around the bylaws? Okay, can I get a motion to approve? Yep. 
I'm on the uh, uh, section seven uh, rules of procedure, it says all up meetings shall be conducted according to Robert's rules of order. Um, there might be something in the bylaws that calls for a different way of handling something. Usually, when I've seen a, a, a provision like this, it says all meetings shall be conducted according to Robert rules, Robert's rules of order, except as otherwise provided in these bylaws. Or in the city, or in city, uh, or in the municipal code, something to that effect. I mean, whatever we do here has to go back to the staff to work on, and we can't vote on it till next week. I know that's this may just be a technical thing, but it's it's the kind of thing that if it does come up during the year, it's much more difficult if we haven't resolved it now. So, if there were a I guess I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm following you, but if if that paragraph said according to Robert's rules of order, except as otherwise noted in the bylaws, where else in the bylaws would it describe what an exception to that? Would we need to add an exception to that? In, no, or no, it's just if if there could be something the way we amend the bylaws, for instance, might be different from Robert's rules of order, or it might not provide for uh, amendments. Uh, in the same way we do. Um, and there also might be something in the municipal code, code which says that we have to do a certain thing a certain way. Um, that doesn't usually come up, but if it does come up, um, I'd want to, you know, we would, we would naturally do it that way, but this way the, what we would actually do in practice would conform to what our bylaws are. I think if you wanted to, and actually we're probably not following Robert's rules of order right now because we have a motion on the table and we didn't have a second and we're not discussing the motion and we didn't have the motion fail and all that other fun stuff. <laughs> just so just so everybody knows that I'm actually aware of that. Um, <laughs> nevertheless, we tend to be slightly less formal here. Um, if your suggestion is to just simply amend that one particular sentence to accept as otherwise provided for in the bylaws, I think that could happen here now. Um, so, so, moved. Yeah. so moved. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, we're going to withdraw. I'm going to executively withdraw uh, Commissioner Guy's motion. Um, and then uh, we'll uh, essentially um, have a motion to approve the uh, bylaws with the uh, change to section seven. All meetings shall be conducted according to Robert's rules of order and amended, except as otherwise provided in the bylaws. Is that correct? In these bylaws. In these bylaws. Okay. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motioned. By Commissioner Fenster and seconded by Commissioner Barnard. All those <coughs> in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. All right, that motion carries. Thank you. And luckily, we don't have to do that for another year. All right, uh, now we'll move on to the actual meet of this evening. Uh, we have a public hearing for 902 Fifth Avenue. Earl Sprague House, a certificate of appropriateness for uh, replacement of second story windows. Um, do we have a staff report? Sorry, I don't, I don't have a lot of background on this. I looked through the staff report today. Actually went out yesterday afternoon and took a few more pictures to add it to the slideshow that Jennifer prepared. So just bear with me, obviously. So we have a request for a certificate of appropriateness for the historic landmark, uh, the Earl Sprague House at 902 Fifth Avenue. Um, it was, looks like it was designated as a historic landmark in 1987. And for, just as a reminder for the commission, anytime there is a exterior modification to a historic landmark property. It does require approval by the commission of a, of a certificate of appropriateness. Um, and so you have before you a request for an exterior modification for window replacement on this historic landmark. 
um, and it involves the uh, upper story windows um, as, as replacement. Uh, does not include any of the, the uh, ground level, ground, ground floor uh, windows. So that said, um, it's at the northwest corner of Pratt and Fifth Avenue. It's just to the north of Thompson Park. And um, the next few slides, and they, I don't think there was any uh, kind of pictures of the, of the house, exterior of the house in your packet, but I went out and took a few additional pictures late yesterday afternoon since I knew I was going to be here <laughs> spending time with the commission. So just wanted to provide uh, just some context of the, of the property. Uh, this is uh, from Fifth Avenue. Uh, looking at the house, uh, basically in the middle of the street, uh, <laughs> looking at the north side of the north side elevation, and you can kind of see that upper level window and that dormer area up there. Um, and then this would be kind of a view from the corner on the left side, and then this would be a view of the east side of the house uh, from Pratt Street on the right side. And I can certainly toggle back and forth if you want to see the views back and forth at all. Um, and then on this slide, uh, this picture is also from Pratt Street. It's just kind of towards the back of the house, showing the back of the house on the left-hand image. And then the right-hand image, again, is from Fifth Avenue, uh, but it's kind of the left side or west side of the house. It's kind of the best angle I could get <laughs> trying to show that side of the house as well. Um, so, um, as noted, this is a slide that Jennifer prepared. Um, as I mentioned, the proposal is to replace the second story windows with, I believe it's a wood composite window that's um, manufactured by Renewal by Anderson uh, in the same basically style, window style. Um, and I think it's noted that the applicant indicated, and it was indicated in the packet that Jennifer prepared, that it's not clear if uh, the, um, on the age of the windows that are being replaced uh, and whether or not they are original to the house, although based on some of the images that are in the picture, they do look fairly old. Um, and I'm not sure, and I, like I said, I haven't had a conversation with the owner uh, or the um, a representative from Renewal by Anderson to see if they've had any, if they've considered um, window repair as an option as opposed to replacement. So I would certainly ask um, the applicant, uh, maybe if they could come down after I'm done talking to maybe give some additional background um, on the options that they explored uh, with respect to uh, looking at uh, window repair or replacement on this home. Um, and, and these are, I think these were included in your packet as well. It just included uh, kind of images of the existing windows from both the interior and the exterior, as well as on, you could see that on the computers, but it doesn't seem to be working. Both, yes. Dick and I both tried it and it turned the computer off. Oh, under it, there you go, see? New kids. New kids. New kids. <laughs> the magic button. <laughs> Did you want me to go back at all? No, no, I've been kind of craning my neck, okay. but I don't want to come home with a sore neck. Explain to my wife why I have a sore neck. So again, my understanding on these, this slide is that this shows uh, images of the existing windows, both on the interior, which is the left image, left images, the, the middle images are the exterior existing windows. And it looks like there are existing storm windows on the on the hall on the upper windows as well. And then the would right would they be removed permanently, the storm windows? So we probably need to get some clarification. I would assume that's the case. That's my understanding typically with window replacement. We get clarification from either the owner or the uh, I believe there's a representative from uh, Renewal by Anderson here as well. And then the, uh, the other images on the right-hand side, I believe, are the replacement proposed replacement windows. And again, this is uh, just running through the next few slides. Are uh, do you know whether there are any federal criteria for such replacements? 
Yeah, uh, Commissioner, if you don't mind, we'd like to let him have uh, I'm sorry. finish his presentation, mm -hmm. and then we'll open it up to comments mm -hmm. from commissioners, and you can you can sure. uh, hammer away at that point. But <laughs> <laughs> um, again, this is just another room, and I can't quite read that exactly which which room that is, but obviously it's just basically same perspective views interior, exterior, existing windows, and then the proposed replacement windows. And I believe these were each in your packet as well as, sorry, as well as some additional manufacturer information uh, uh, that was provided by the applicant and from the uh, from renewal by Anderson as well. Um, and so, again, uh, I think it would be helpful um, just to have of the uh, applicant to provide a little bit more background on um, the, some of the additional, I mean, kind of what they've considered in terms of and why, um, you know, kind of the rationale for making this request. So uh, that concludes my remarks for now, but I'm happy to respond to any questions as best I can. Okay, great. Thanks. Sure. All right. Let's uh, open it up to uh, questions from commissioners. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you, we'll, we'll get it all figured out here. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> Commissioner Fenster, you had a question. Uh, are there any federal criteria for this kind of replacement? So typically, and uh, Commissioner Guy, you feel free to uh, interject as well. Uh, my understanding, and I'm going off memory, is based on the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation on historic properties, that in terms of the guidelines regarding those standards is that uh, the preference is to repair in place, if at all possible. Um, and then, if not, if for whatever reason, uh, repair in place is, is not possible, then the alternative is to uh, replace with like materials and, and like design. And uh, Commissioner Guy, you have, had, you have anything else to add? Feel free. I think everybody heard me. But, I know, um, but it's the so, recording. So yes, <laughs> you, you would repair what you can, obviously. Um, and to be honest, these windows look like they're in pretty good shape. So I would not see a reason to replace them. Uh, but if you had to replace them, you would replace them in kind. And that there's a scale there of replacing exactly in kind, same materials, same workmanship, et cetera, et cetera, to Replacing something that does not detract from the building, but could be of new materials if historic materials are not available anymore. Um, yeah, so there's there's a scale to it, and you know every every example is different. So yes, uh, I, I would guidance. like to note. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would like to note that uh, if the replacement is going to enable the permanent removal of storm windows, uh, that uh, enhances the historic preservation uh, quality. All right, any uh, other questions for staff? Even if not, we'll, we'll have the applicant come down and give us some further information. All right. <coughs> Thank you, Planner Schumacher. And if we ha if we can have uh, members of, from the applicant, if you'd like to come down and if you have any m remarks prepared, you're welcome to fire those away. And if not, we'll, we can um, we can just ask questions. But welcome. Thank you. My name is Laura Berger, and I am um, the applicant and the owner of 902 Fifth Avenue. I don't have any remarks prepared, so or prepared, so you can go ahead and ask. All right, uh, Commissioner, questions? Yeah, so I guess my, my question is, why are you replacing these windows? They look to be in pretty good shape. So. They're extremely drafty, um, okay. very cold in the winter. One window, we have our desk right by, and it is freezing beside that window. Um, and in, in the summer, of course, it's really hot up there as well. Um, and you can feel that 
heat and not cold coming through those windows. Um, another one we have looked at repairing them. Um, we looked at that in 2020. A person came out, um, a contractor came out, said that they would give me an estimate. They never got back to me. After multiple calls, there were no returns from those calls. Um, I contacted other historic window um, companies and nobody got back to me because it was such a small job, just seven windows, and so they weren't interested in that kind of job. I don't think it's time. Oh, oh I'm, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm uh, really nervous about public speaking. That's so okay. It's just, it's just it's us. It's fine. Uh, yeah. um, nobody's watching, trust me. Um, I mean, have you considered putting storm interior and or exterior storm windows on these to help with the draft? Because I have to say, you know, these look to be perhaps not original to the house, but mm -hmm. pretty early. You know, anytime you have pin, pin windows, that's going to be probably at least like 1920s, 1930s. Yeah. So you're talking about, you know, windows that have been on the house for at least probably 70 to 80 years. Mm -hmm. And so those are made with wood of a quality that you will never see again. And right. so to put that wood into the landfill and replace it with, no offense, <laughs> a composite wood that is, is not, there's just no way that it's gonna last this long, um, is you know, very unfortunate and to be the last resort, I would say. And there are definitely things you can do to help with that, you know, the single pane um, we have not looked at storm windows on the inside or outside of those, but obviously we want to be able to open them mm -hmm. when it, the weather's nice and stuff, so I don't know how that would play. Well, there's storm windows that have Oh, well, we have, like, screens we do have yeah. screens on those windows, but I'm not, I guess I'm not sure what okay. you're suggesting for Well, that. there's storm windows that have a screen, like, oh, on half of it, okay. so you can share inside when during the summer. Okay, I'm gonna let somebody else go. All right, so let's see. Next up, I have uh, Commissioner Jacoby. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have a few questions. Um, do, do you know, are any of the window panes poured glass? Can you tell, do they have that watery kind of appearance? Not like the ones downstairs do. The ones on the first floor definitely are, but not the not that I can tell from upstairs. Okay. Do any of the windows not open fully at this point? Um, there is one window that does not open fully, and a couple windows that open about this much, and then others that open this much, right? Like those dormers right beside each other, one will open this much, the other one this much. So. I live with ancient windows. Yeah. I, I understand <laughs> the, the problems here. Um, and I think it said something about jump construction, installing from the exterior, is that correct? Yes. Um, so that's going to go inside the, the existing window frame. How much is that going to reduce the size of the windows? Do we have numbers on that? Or yeah, you, you can expect anywhere from about a half an inch to an inch. Half inch size. On each side? Yeah. So an around. inch to two inches total on each dimension. That's correct. You're, you're basically removing the operable portions of the right. window only while maintaining the old frames that are still there. Because we still do want to basically maintain that historical aspect to the frame and, and the brick mold and everything, but really we're just talking about removing the glass and those old movable portions of the window. And, yeah, I was, I was trying to read about some of this online and, and some things said it, it doesn't affect the frame at all. But other uh, sites that I looked at said it, you, uh, you widen the frame on the exterior when you put in a, a, a jump style frame and it would be a different material. Would you still be using the same wood frame? Could you tell me more about what it's gonna do to the frame on the exterior? Yeah, there, there was some more documentation that was provided um, to the planning committee that actually showed what portions of the window is being removed versus which isn't, I'm happy to walk over there and just point out with my finger. If you I, want I saw to. those little yellow lines yeah, and things okay, and stuff. But that. but yeah. again, looking at different websites, some said that it does affect the frame on the exterior and some said it, it, it 
it didn't. And you're, you're yeah. So I wasn't really clear on that. I wanted I, just clarification. I'm, I think I'd want clarification from you on what you're describing as the frame before I answer okay. that question. Because some people use different nomenclature depending on Well, anything on the that you would see outside of the sash mm -hmm. um, from the exterior, yep. would you be affecting that? Outside of the sash? Yes. No. Okay. No. That, that old frame, all those non-movable parts stay exactly as they are. Now... Can I make another comment about the drafts and stuff like that, too? Is that okay? Sure. So one portion about this is, yes, it's a single-pane window that's always going to allow for that heat transfer, and the drafts that they're feeling is because that old wood, even though they don't make wood like that anymore, you're 100% correct like that, it doesn't seal up against those non-movable portions of that old window anymore. So putting things like say a storm window, interior or exterior, that helps to a point, but that weather is still finding its way through portions of that window that have nothing to do with the movable aspects of the window itself. So we're also sealing up those areas too when we're making those replacements. So storm windows could help for sure, but I don't think it would ever get to the point where it would be the area where Laura and her family are feeling comfortable in that upper portion of their house that just isn't doing much to do other than keeping the squirrels and the raccoons out at this point in time. So I think that's another thing that has to be considered too when you are doing these window replacements. And if you could clarify for me also um, a little bit more about fiber X. Are there other options? Does Anderson have any options with true wood rather than fiber X? Yeah. Number one, and if not, or even with that being said, what, could you describe the appearance of Fibrex? Is it look? Is it uh, smooth plastic appearing with wood impregnation? Does it have natural wood grain, real wood grain, or simulated wood grain? What does it look like? Sure, it is a smooth gauge on the frame of the window itself. It is basically wood pieces that are used from the wood windows at our manufacturing plant that then get put together under high heat and pressure and extruded with a thermal polymer, okay? So it is composite through and through, like a Trex decking or something like that. But the appearance of it is very smooth from look and feel. It does not try to simulate wood or anything like that whatsoever. Are there wood options through Anderson at all? Through Anderson, yeah, sure. If you wanted to go to like Home Depot or something like that and buy an Anderson window, you can absolutely do So you could make wood have window wood windows. From okay. that perspective, yep. But from, from my company's perspective, granted, Anderson is our parent company. We only deal with that Fibrex material. Thank you. Sure. All right, uh, Commissioner Fenster. I have no questions. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um. So the windows are, they are single pane. Do you, does Anderson make any kind of a storm product, a historic storm window? Um, not that I'm aware of, no. And your comment too about single pane, are you talking about the old windows or the new windows? Old windows, I assume the new, the new ones I think you had in here are double gone, pane double pane. pane. Yeah. Um, but to clarify how this gets installed, essentially you would take out the sashes uh, of the old windows and any stops, and yeah. then you would that window frame and sash unit would slide into the basically squared up opening that's left. Yep. Dumping that old frame. Um, taking that a step further to any old hardware that can be removed, like broken pulley systems, anything like that, we will take those out seal up those areas again as well um, just to make sure that we're eliminating that draft weakness as much as possible from the old frame and the new frame. Okay. And that's only if it can be removed. We're not going to touch it one way or another. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you could may just be sure you're speaking in the mic. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's recorded, so we won't we'll miss the recording of. Do you want me to make those comments again? Yeah, if you want, if you don't mind, that'd be yeah. great. Sure. So with that jump frame install, 
we will be removing old hardware like pulley systems, ropes, if possible. Of course, the whole concept of a jump frame install is to preserve that old frame as much as possible. So we're not taking anything out that can't be easily removed from the get-go. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, any other commissioner questions for the applicant? Thank you. Um, I will go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing portion of this. So if there's anybody else in the audience that would like to speak to this. No, I'm getting a headshake. Okay. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. And we'll, we'll uh, call you up if we have any other questions that we'd like. Appreciate you. <clears throat> All right. So we'll go ahead and close the public hearing portion of this item and open it up for discussion amongst the commissioners. Commissioner oh. Jacoby. I, I have mixed feelings about this. I understand the national standards um, and we were about preservation and that means not replacing by definition. Uh, I have Windows built in 1885, and they are drafty, I must say. Um, but I still have them. Um, I think, I, looking at the national standards, when, I, when I've looked at that before, and they show examples of window replacements, they show egregious examples of windows totally out of proportion or partially bricked in and made into these horrible things. It doesn't sound like this is going to be that kind of a situation. And I think we are coming to a point, we're in, in the 21st century where we really have to think very seriously and hard about efficiency and green standards and reducing energy consumption. And these are conflicting goals with preservation sometimes. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure where to go with this personally. Um, I can tell you I made my own interior storm windows and I am surprised and I, I have Upstairs, I have commercially made interior storm windows that work exceedingly well. And I made my own interior storm windows downstairs uh, at quite a reasonable cost, and they work fairly well also. I'm amazed at how much they remove drafts. Um, so I think that is an option that we should consider as a commission. I'm still torn though. This where to go on this because I, I understand my heating bill was probably like your heating bill, which is getting astronomical and we do have other considerations, I think, um, to consider. Anyway, just my thoughts out loud. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fenster. Yes, th there has been uh, no uh, information provided as to whether or not the windows that will be replaced, the windows and the window materials and the frame sizes and shapes that will be replaced, would be replaced, are the originals. Uh, we don't know whether uh, the replacements are replacing originals or are replacing uh, some intermediate period windows that were installed. So that's one factor uh, that I'm thinking about. Uh, the second factor is simplicity in terms of maintaining the visual images of the original structure. And uh, the third factor that I'm thinking about is what uh, you just mentioned, and that is uh, the need to balance uh, the preservation uh, interests uh, with uh, other factors, including energy efficiency. So uh, that, ha that set of factors has been in my consideration. And based on what uh, I know about historic preservation, uh, we are coming to a time where um, worn out materials need to be replaced, where intermediate prior replacements uh, need to uh, make an attempt to go back to originals 
at least in terms of visual imagery, uh, if not in terms of uh, original materials. And we are so far along now in terms of uh, new available materials that uh, we can accomplish uh, a great deal uh, by using new materials to uh, replace the visual imagery uh, of the original structure. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Guy. So I, I will just say, you know, I have been a, in professionally in preservation for over 25 years, and um, there's plenty of research out there that says that an original single pane window with a storm window is as efficient, if not more efficient, than a double pane window. So let's keep that in mind, that a double pane new window is not going to solve all your problems either. Um, and also, as I said, from looking at the style of this window, and I'm assuming, Brian, that you know that it's a wooden window, you know, it's been working, functioning in this house for probably over 80 years. And if it was repaired and maintained well, it would last for another 100 plus years. Whereas I can guarantee you that the replacement windows will not. They're just, they're going to be, if you're lucky, you'll, you know, get to have the payback on the window before you have to replace it. You know, double plane windows, unfortunately, don't work very well in Colorado. The seals dry up, they break, and so then you're losing a lot of that, you know, energy efficiency from your double pane windows um, pretty soon into it. Um, so for me personally, I, I can't see removing, if these were in disrepair, you know, if they were missing uh, part of their frames, if they had broken windows, that sort of thing, I could see potentially replacing them. Um, but they look to be in good shape. They could be repaired. They could have a storm window, either interior or exterior, added to them to gain that efficiency. Um, and typically, windows are not where most of your energy is lost. It's through the roof, so you're much more, much more efficient to, you know, and and reinforce your roof than to mess with too many windows. So that's my opinion. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Jacoby. Any some more comments? More thoughts. Um, yeah, we, we are here to approve or disapprove improvements on homes. Um, and almost all, all improvements that are made on the exterior do change appearance. Um, we are here to make improvements to balance livability of the homes with preservation. And there are homes that have additions on them that compromise the appearance somewhat, but make the home much more livable. And again, I live in a historic home and I, I uh, understand the need to, the importance of making it livable. Uh, that being said, um, if there are wood windows available versus this fiber X, which it sounds like yet another plastic compound. Yes, it's got wood ingrained in it, but um, there's nothing uglier to me than sun-baked plastic fake wood, um, which you see all the time in Colorado. Uh, we have incredible UV light here, and, and uh, plastic just gets baked and it looks ugly. So if wood is an option and that's where we go, I would say we should go with the wood option instead of fiber X. But all of this being said, again, um, interior storm windows do work very well. I can vouch for that. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen the data that, that uh, Gita mentions, but um, I certainly find that they work pretty well. And I wonder, does anybody know? The other problem with the functionality of the windows is opening the windows. I must admit, half my windows are painted shut, and I leave them that way so that they're less drafty. Um, does anybody know, does, is there people who rebuild traditional sash windows in Longmont? Is that an option here? Because if that's not an option, we should consider more heavily replacement. 
that actually leads to a question I was going to ask uh, staff. D do we keep a list still of area contractors that are involved in historic preservation? It feels like we had that at some point, but I don't. I might be making that up too. I'll, I'll check on that. I know at one point in time we had a resource list, and I know I believe maybe History Colorado has a list of contractor resources as well. Um, you know, the last application that I recall that involved window repair that went through a COA when I was um, staff liaison was, uh, at 12, I think it was 1243 3rd Avenue, uh, where they went through a company, I believe, called Phoenix Window Restoration. And I'm not sure. I don't think they're in Longmont necessarily, but they are in the Front Range. So, um, but yeah, I, um, I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, did, uh, the applicant did not have good luck in terms of their previous attempts at uh, trying to get some information and, and estimates regarding, um, you know, repair of the existing windows, uh, which is unfortunate, but um, we can certainly check and see if there's other resources available. Yeah, and the, the reason I, one of the reasons I asked that, if I understood from the applicant correctly, there was a particular outfit that they worked, they were trying to work with for repair, but, and didn't get a response, but it wasn't a multiple number of, you know, so if there's, and, and, I, and I understand that we, this is, it's difficult to find these resources, right? These are, these are fairly specialized trades. Right. Um, and so if there's a way to, you know, just as a general rule that we can have resources available to people um, to make it a little easier to, to guide folks down the, the, you know, sort of path, um, I think that'd be valuable and I, kn I know the list at, at the state is there but it's also sort of huge so any other uh, commissioner comments uh, uh, I have a tiering of objectives to be accomplished in a situation like this. Um, that would include preservation of original materials, preservation of visual original materials, um, preservation of contours, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and somewhere in that consideration would be a determination qualitative or maybe quantitative determination of livability. Um, and uh, I don't know whether uh, this commission has a sequence of uh, determination factors or whether it's subjective. I don't know that it's, a, I mean, there's some level of subjectivity to it, right? But you know, again, we go back to the Secretary of Interior Standards. There, it's reasonably clear, right? I mean, it, it, that if existing material can be preserved, it should be, right? Um, now, there are, it, it's complicated, right? Because there are times when somebody might make changes that <coughs> would involve removal of some material. Uh, and to Commissioner Guy's point, you know, if the functionality or the condition is um, such that completely prevents its use, that's a that's a significant factor. And in particular, you know, other factors might come into play in terms of whether they want tax, you know, are looking for tax credits, um, you know, if they're looking for money or uh, different certifications. So that it, it, there's no real clean, clear answer. Mm -hmm. But I think. As a general rule, if it's there and it and it's in reasonably decent condition, the, the interior standards would would say that it ought to be kept. And if it's replaced, it's replaced with like materials. So I think that's 
one of the other issues here is that it's hard to, it, it, it's replaced, you know, and then the other pieces are the scale and the look and so on. And you, you could really uh, get into shaving hairs about the extra inch around, you know, which does have an effect. And, you know, maybe it's less on the second floor. If it was the first floor, it would be, a really, you know, maybe even more of a problem because uh, it does start to change the appearance, you know, but at, at some level it's a call, a subjective call by the commissioners. Uh, by the way, I assume these dormers are not original. What do you mean? Because they were, to my recollection, uh, not common in that period of time. Yeah, I would imagine they were they were original. So, uh, and uh, unfortunately, just as a comment, uh, you know, probably one of the most controversial and hot button topics in preservation is windows. You know, like it's literally probably at the top of the list of um, things that cause massive hand wringing in the historic preservation community. So. Just please understand. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Um, so I know the action requested is to make a decision. Um, I guess my question would be hearing what everybody's saying, um, could this be sort of tabled? Um, could we maybe try to help her out with maybe getting some names and, you know, trying to get some other ideas so that, you know, we could maybe either try fixing or going more with a wood and give it a little time and a little more research and then hopefully get a decision before the next cold snap <laughs> so she's not freezing or sweating for, you know, the rest of the year. Um, because, yeah, I'm sort of, I'm hearing all of this and I'm thinking, yeah, if it was my house, I'd want to make sure that this was fixed. On the other hand, I don't know how capable she is to do these things herself. And, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of at a loss other than to try to do some more research and try to see if, we, if there are some resources for her. From a uh, just a procedural standpoint, if the certificate of an appropriateness as a as proposed was not approved, uh, would there need to be uh, you know there's another application that needs to happen if if the homeowner decided to come back with an alternate plan based on recommendations from the commission? Is there any? Penalty or reapplication fee associated with that, or, or not? No, we we don't charge an application fee for certificates of appropriateness. We're trying to encourage historic preservation in the community, so we don't charge fees for our reviews. And so, and there's no time lag or time wait period in terms of reapplying with additional information. Um, and so, there's, I think, in the, in the staff communication, there's. There's multiple options uh, in terms of actions that the commission could consider. Um, and so obviously you can approve with, as proposed, you can approve with conditions, uh, approving in part, denying in part, you can defer action on the application based on the need for additional information, or you can deny the application. Those are kind of the four options that were outlined in the, uh, the staff report. Do it again, sorry. I have to scroll down every time. There you go. There you go. Kristen's kind of like a little figure. All right. Um, well, this is obviously a difficult decision. But one thing that is clear to me is there is a wood option. And if there's a wood option, I would not approve FiberX personally. It may be more functional, but it's not appropriate for this house. 
And there are other options that haven't been looked at, such as full interior storm windows. So I would move that we deny the certificate of appropriateness for now with the understanding that we encourage you to come back if there are difficulties finding uh, suitable alternatives. Uh, but I would look into uh, getting interior storm windows. And if that doesn't work, perhaps we can find some more information for who can rebuild windows historically. Um, and if that doesn't work, I would consider uh, the wooden replacements, but I don't think I would consider the fiber X replacements. So I would move that we deny the certificate of appropriateness at this time with an with request to encourage you to come back if you have further problems, because I understand livability is important in your own home. Okay, uh, we do have a motion on the floor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I had a question. Well, yeah, let's, yeah. let's, yeah. Um, I'll second it. Okay, so we do have a uh, Motion to uh, deny the application from uh, Commissioner Jacoby and seconded by Commissioner Sibley. Uh, now we can take discussion on that motion. Any further comments? I don't know that uh, you know. If we're again, if we're following Robert's rules of order specifically, we're we're not uh, opening this back up to the public at this point. Um, so I think I think that period of comment is is probably passed. Um, so. I guess um, my only comment is, I, uh, you know, I understand. I think there's, there's, there are a couple things going on. I, th I think that the commission would like to see a, a, a broader effort to consider storm. With again, we're not here to try to, you know, put people through the ringer, but but it is an important item. And so, to the degree that the commission and th and their you know, basically the staff. Historic preservation staff can can help and assist people to get a little better direction. We'd like to see that happen, uh, and then you know, with with a with an effort uh, on that end, and then potentially an, an alternate um, proposal. We'd certainly welcome uh, people back. So, uh, with no, if there's no further discussion on that motion. Yeah. I don't know whether it's a discussion on the motion, but um, okay. it's a question get, get, get for your the new. Excuse me. Question for a newcomer, and that is, uh, in terms of historic preservation. Uh, in addition to our concerns about the configuration of the structure and its exterior, uh, how much interest do we have? in the configuration interior. In other words, uh, does our preservation mandate include uh, both the shapes and sizes of the interior and the visual imagery of the interior? And I raise that question specifically because uh, interior storm windows are not wonderfully original in terms of the visual imagery of the interior uh, any more than they would be wonderful for the exterior. Uh, so I have a question as to whether uh, interior storm windows are ever in our institutional view uh, <clears throat> as good as a good set of replacement windows. Commissioner Guy. Absolutely. Yes. Anytime you can maintain a window in its original opening, especially if it's an original slash early um, <clears throat> wood that you're never going to see again, then absolutely. Um, I mean, this house has the benefit of having ex 
exterior storms. You can see the hooks above every window. So there's, you know, a, they could potentially just replace the very exterior storm. Obviously, that that can be challenging. Not too many people want to get up and rip, you know, take a storm window off and put a screen on, you know, twice a year. Get the ladder out, all that sort of stuff. So I think that that is sort of my bow to, um, you know, that livability quotient, which is if you have the interior storms, they're a lot easier to either take on or take off, or have ones that are functional alongside the window. <coughs> So, and, and our main purpose here, this group, yes, is the exterior of the building. That's our principal function. We don't get into the interior too much unless we're asked to review a tax credit project that mm -hmm. wants money for the interior. So, yeah, typically we're with these sorts of things, we're 99% looking at the interior. Thank you, Commissioner Gay. Any uh, further comments or discussion on the motion on the floor? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Um, all those in favor of the denial of the certificate of appropriateness, uh, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed to the motion? Opposed. Okay, so we have uh, <coughs> commissioners uh, in favor, uh, Barnett, Jacoby, Lane, Gayu, Sibley, and Fenster opposed. So, uh, sorry that that didn't go the way you were hoping for, but we hope that you uh, understand our position and, and our encouragement to find some other solutions, and we'd welcome you back here at another time to talk a little further about maybe some slightly more uh, appropriate uh, solutions and rely on staff and uh, for a little bit of assistance. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Next item on our agenda is new business, and it doesn't appear that we have any. That's correct. Okay. Um, prior business uh, our 2023 planning retreat uh, dates. Certainly like to get some things on the calendar. So do we have any options here that staff's looked at? Well, yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I know you guys <laughs> talked a little bit about this at your December meeting. There's a fairly extensive discussion on different topics of interest regarding code amendments and other projects uh, the commission is, is interested in um, pursuing um, and uh, reaching some completion on. Um, and so I know uh, we did some checking on potential dates in March and we have a hold, and I, I know we're, we were looking at Thursdays, and I don't recall in uh, 21 when you, when you had the uh, retreat, I believe that was on a weeknight as well. Do you guys recall no, that? that was a, I thought it was during a weekday, like a Saturday. Or something. Saturday? Okay. Well, anyway, um, it sounds like, ba and I'm sorry, I haven't been working on this, but it sounds like based on some of the, Checking, uh, staff had looked at a couple of Thursdays, and I don't know if you prefer a weeknight or a weekend. I don't, we I kind of checking with the commission right now. You have a preference. And we can skip the mic on this one if we don't, just do it real quick. Uh, I mean, we have a hold <laughs> right now for using the council study session room on March 16th or the 23rd, which are Thursdays. Uh, which would be basically an evening, um, late afternoon or evening. Yeah. Uh, okay. I understand. Do you, okay. <laughs> Do you have any quick opinions? Um, uh, the 23rd definitely doesn't work for me. Yep. Um,
country. So uh, my preference would probably be Italy. Okay. Um, and I know that's a hard thing to ask, but. I mean, I know when I had a few uh, retreats with the commission, we I think we had them out at uh, Sandstone Ranch. Yeah. Um, and we did we did uh, Saturdays, I believe, at that time. So we can certainly check on availability for a venue if if the preference is on a Saturday. Uh, probably not a Sunday, I would guess. Right. So. Right. right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, <laughs> I can make m multiple things work, but that would probably be a preference for me. Those two dates that you put out there, I I wouldn't be able to make. Okay. So, all right. Any other comments about just Saturdays or? Yeah, that's a good choice. Okay. Me too. So okay. it sounds, I'm getting the general sense that uh, Saturday is preferred to a evening on a weekday. I, I think you've got at least two comments to that effect. And, and some are, and, so, and a few other, whatever, whatever works best yeah. for, the, for the commission. <laughs> This is this is. Can this is a we, tough one? Yeah, this is going to be tough. Uh, can you? Uh, what about those? Uh, what are those foolish little online calendar oh. apps where everybody jumps in and? Uh, yeah. Zoo, what are, I don't know what they are. You know what I'm talking about? Where you have there's a handful like of dates Google and everybody or right? Something yeah, like that. everybody Google blocks poll? out the time that they can't yeah. do it or yep. what what have you. Could we? Do we have the technology to set? I, I'm off. sure we can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or I'll get my son to do it. There you go. However, I, I, you know, that, that might be worthwhile just to kind of ping some people's availability. Yeah. Maybe include some weekdays in there just in case everybody, you know, because if we end up with half <coughs> the folks can't make a Saturday, you know, we'll have to. Work so yeah, it. obviously the two dates that we had hold on don't work anyway, the 16th and the 23rd. So. Yeah, and just FYI, that's so the night the week of the 19th is uh St. Brain Valley spring break. True. Which good I point. guess I, yeah, I might be the only one still with kids in the school district, but no. That's a good point. <laughs> but um, data data might too. But um <laughs> of of March. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, if we can if we can do a poll a yep. poll for dates and you know maybe a maybe a friday or a friday afternoon or no 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 okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's all right i'm i'm okay with the weekend too i but uh just okay well I'll, I'll, like i said i'll i'll yeah. chat with jennifer and glenn and see what options there are and we'll we'll send out a poll and Get everybody's kind of takes and availability and our non-availability, perhaps, and right. then we kind of work around there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you already have constraints on. So related to that, obviously, um, you know, whenever we settle on a date, I think we'd also want to create an agenda uh, with a list of topics. Um, and I know, like I said, I, I read through the minutes from the December meeting. Obviously, there was quite a bit of discussion regarding a variety of different topics. Um, you know, obviously, code amendments is an ongoing discussion uh, with uh, demolition, property maintenance, penalties and enforcement, and other, other things as priorities. And then there's also kind of the whole discussion regarding you know, the pros and cons regarding neighborhood design guidelines versus the conservation overlay versus historic district. So we could kind of have some discussion about that as well. Uh, I know we've been talking about um, working on a grant application for a community preservation plan, a community survey plan, perhaps other community outreach efforts, um, and if there's other commission interests. And then also I think a part of the retreat, you'd also want to establish priorities for those, those items that the commission is interested in working on. Um, and we can, you know, as, as when we send out the poll, perhaps we could send out a list of topics and have a maybe a poll on topics of interest that the commission would like to um, discuss at the retreat, unless you guys have already talked about that. Um, and we, have well, uh, Glenn did have us run through uh, during the December meeting. He did have us run through some, some ideas, uh, but it would not be... A, a bad thing, especially since we have, uh, you know, one new commissioner 
um, it wasn't at that meeting to, to throw the, that back out uh, and, and maybe during that um, pull, just pulling the, I think it's might even be in, I don't know if it was in December's meeting minutes, but in, you know, from one of the past meetings, just that list of, of priorities that Glenn had proposed and we discussed sure. and just say, you know, are there any that come off or need to be added to? Um, yeah, and we had some of this discussion. I remember when, uh, after Jade left um, and early last year, uh, we kind of revisited some of the topics and discussions that happened during the, uh, the 21 retreat. And we talked about kind of at that time, at least, what the commission's uh, interests were and their priorities. And we, maybe we can kind of revisit that, that as well, in addition to what was, what's been more recently discussed with yep. the commission and staff, if that sounds reasonable. You, yeah. Uh, do it, I'm sorry. I'm, do it again one more time, and I'll get you on here. I hit these things. And, okay. So, um, Ryan and Chairman, uh, I think the uh, it was pretty clear uh, at our last meeting that we uh, we felt that the question of demolition, right. because of the conversations that we had with the uh, mayor council in our joint meeting that that the concept of demolition encompassed a large number of things and I'm just kind of repeating what I said what's in the minutes already sure. um, and that if we only did that that would be a, a, a fantastic thing to get some kind of meat on how we want to deal with those issues during the year I think the other thing that that I concluded I think we all concluded was the staff maybe said that until we get feedback from the city attorney on how they want to revise their presentations to us on, re on changing the municipal code, um, then what, it really didn't make much sense for us to discuss it anymore. So we had a pretty good discussion. Right. And the mayor's office, the city attorney said, well, we kind of have to go back and rethink this based on what we heard. So we're, I, think, I don't think that really is a good retreat subject unless – the city attorney is prepared to come up with some information for us. Otherwise, we're just going to be talking about the same stuff we talked about before with no, there's no there there. Um, right. Well, and so how much of an ask is it? I mean, we're going to have staff there uh, on some level. How much is, uh, of an ask is it to get at least a representative of the city attorney's office there during this retreat? Um, happy I've talked to you. I mean, you know, Glenn's been more having conversations with them about you know, obviously the code amendment. So I can ask him and see what his thoughts are on that. I, I think that could, I mean, it could potentially be very valuable and and add some efficiency to the process if it, and some guidance to, you know, getting to that conversation. It, it, you know, it's worth the ask. Sure. Um, that's pretty much all I have on the retreat topic until we are able to sit. Ryan, the other thing oh, yeah. that, that uh, staff said they would be getting for us, and I think it really is would be helpful if, if they had that for the retreat, is comparables between other cities in Colorado, other cities in the region, other cities mm -hmm. in Colorado, how they're dealing with an issue. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, I they saw... They said they had all that stuff. Well, you know, I put that together a while ago. I, I think I threw you under the bus there because you weren't here and said, yeah, Brian has all that. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I, I do, and I, I've, I've, I have that. I probably needs to be, and I think I've, I've given that to Glenn and Jennifer. Uh, it was some of the kind of the research that I did of all the various, some of the other uh, Front Range communities about their demolition process. Um, you know, if they have a demolition by neglect, penalties and enforcement, things along those lines. I noted that there's a few, probably a few communities that have recently, more recently, since I put that information together, updated their preservation codes. I think Lafayette was one example. Um, but um, yeah, I, it wouldn't take too much to, to kind of resurrect that and update that information. Uh, I think that'd be valuable. Sure. I mean, I think probably Gita and I are the only two people that were at the session. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so anyway, yeah. it, it, it's all it's mostly going to be new anyways. So sure, yeah. yeah. No, it'd be good to kind of revisit that and, like I said, update that based on um, you know new information that's available based on potential changes that other communities have made. So yeah. Yep. Uh, thanks. Uh, if you start, I guess. All right. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn some. Um, yeah, you did mention this, Brian, but I, I would like, personally, I'd like to see a discussion of conservation overlays at the retreat. Um, since our last meeting, I've spoken to Glenn several times. It, it sounds like the city, that we were not going to pursue it uh, and that the historic East Side neighborhood could pursue it. And certainly there's some uh, energy in that, that community about getting this done. They've been asking for it for years. Um, the way the conservation overlay is written right now in the city code, um, it's very vague, number one, and I've had some discussions with Glenn about what to do about that. It's really his judgment about what we need to do and what we don't, and so it's very vague code, and it's relatively unusable. Apparently, Historic East Side tried to get a conservation overlay. They uh, applied to the city um, several years ago, I'm not sure how many years ago, I wasn't involved, but it would cost, there's a significant financial commitment and neighborhood groups don't have that. Um, it's treated as a, a, a rezoning, which means you have to notify everybody in your neighborhood, every household outside of your neighborhood within a thousand yards. And do you know what the mailings for that alone cost? There's no way most neighborhoods are gonna be able to do that. So I think we should maybe revisit the conservation overlay code and discuss how we can make it workable so that neighborhoods that are interested that would benefit could actually use it. Thanks. All right, any other comments or questions for now? Helps if I hit the right one. <laughs> um, um, so going back to this woman in her windows, because I, 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 it's painful. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, oh, there's, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I didn't mean to, but yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, this could be a fun year. No. <laughs> um, so I know I'm. Um, Commissioner uh, Gayu said that she may have, you know, some recommendations for whatever. And I, you know, I don't know, you know, all the, how those lists work and all of that. Um, I know that there's a lot of folks that are going to be at the um, the uh, conference next week. Um, and I don't know if, if, if is it appropriate to like gather names and numbers to kind of put on some lists or, or anything like that. I, I don't want to speak out of turn and like, you know, start making more work for people. But on the flip side, you know, if we have those kinds of resources for somebody in her position, you know, she struck me as not really knowing a whole lot about the process. And so she's got this lovely house that she may not necessarily know how to take care of. Um, and, you know, I don't know what kind of guidance is there for somebody like that. So. Yeah, what I might be interested in doing, and I'll talk to Jennifer about this, but I, I mentioned one example when I was a staff liaison about a property on 3rd Avenue that they did yeah. a beautiful job with some window repair uh, through, a, through a company that's like, was doing some checking that looks like it's still in existence. Yeah. Um, and um, and I, I believe that couple would be happy to chat with Laura Oh, sorry, sorry, I turned that off yeah. accidentally. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and see what experience they had, um, kind of if they have any recommendations, and, and just kind of, I think that, that might be helpful just to kind of put her a little bit more at ease yeah. about the whole process. Yeah, uh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, 
There is at the uh, Saving Places conference, I went through the uh, schedule, there's a session on energy codes and historic buildings on the 9th at 3.15. I saw that and I'm, I circled that one as one that I want to go to, but I just heads up for others who are going because that might be very helpful. <laughs> right, right, yeah. And, and there will be some form of uh, a vendor you know, room, and typically that's a place where you might see, now there might, there'll be a lot of guys like the window rep, uh, window reps like to sell windows, um, it, as it turns out, um, but but there may be some folks who have a, you know, maybe specialize in, in uh, storm window products, or, I mean, they, they, they do exist, right? It, it, it's, it, they're out there. I mean, I can certainly understand um, the property owners at the tonight's application because I, I get tons of flyers from renewal by Anderson it's it's amazing <laughs> yeah it seems like yeah. I, I'd like to comment on what happened um, I would have approved the replacement subject to <clears throat> ensuring that uh, a wood material was used other than fibrex and one that uh, provided maximum uh, longevity. Uh, and I would have approved because uh, I think the use of storm windows, exterior or interior, are horrible in terms of historic preservation uh, and getting them off the building uh, on the exterior is worth a lot in terms of restoration and not having them on the interior is worth a lot. So I would have been inclined to approve subject to uh, uh, a guarantee that the maximum longevity of the new window uh, was equal to perhaps the original in terms of the wood product that was used it was probably not Fibrex from the little I know about Fibrex. And I just wanted you all to know what my thoughts were on the subject. Thank you. Uh, quick, I'll get to you, but just a quick comment on storm windows. If we were to approve storm windows, they would have to be historically appropriately scaled storm windows. So, for example, if you're thinking of aluminum storm windows that get slapped onto you know, your typical house, that would not be approved by this commission. Um, they would have to be a, a material that essentially replicated the, the form and shape of the existing windows so that from the exterior, uh, a non-trained eye would not really even notice, just as a piece of information. Um, uh, yeah, you should come over to my house and see my interior storm windows. They really do not change the appearance of the windows very much at all. Um, I have two kinds. Again, I have one that was commercially installed on my upstairs windows, and there is a little plastic bead that goes around the, the window frame, but it's relatively narrow, and it's painted over the color of the trim, and you don't see it during the summer. In the wintertime, you snap the windows onto it, and it works very well. The ones I made for my downstairs are just a wooden frame that uh, I made, and I tuck it behind the uh, the shade on the upper part of the window. And the lower part, I just put two little braces to hold it in, and I unscrew those and take those off. When the window when it's off, you don't see any change at all to the window. So there are options available for interior storm windows. You should know that are pretty yeah. good. And they're both fairly effective. The upstairs commercial ones are better, but the downstairs ones are really just wood frame. And I took the 3M plastic and I sealed that, tightened it up over that. And I just put, it's like reusable 3M plastic on my windows, basically. But it's on the wood frame that I just stick in the windows and it works quite well. If you, if you had your druthers and the costs were not a factor, would you instead use a triple pane with very good wood framing? It's a good, it's a question. I mean, again, my house is historically designated, so yeah. it wouldn't be approved according to the guidelines. I would love to have my windows open without being drafty. Like I said, yeah. some of my leave painted shut because it does make them work better. 
Um, so uh, I'd love what I ideally it costs no object. I would have someone rebuild all my windows. Yeah. And again, I don't know who yeah. does that, but I guess there are people who mm. can rebuild traditional sash windows. And you know, again, this it's been shown in study after study. It's not cost effective for uh, for thermal oh. efficiency. Yes, you add more insulation and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but just for convenience and to get uh, air movement, it would be great to have windows working. Yeah, thanks. All right, let's uh, refocus here. Uh, do we have anything in particular on the HPC code amendments to talk about or just the fact that we need to talk about them during the retreat? Not, or, not much. I know, yeah. as I mentioned, Glenn's not yeah, here this right. evening. Um, you know, I know I did, reading through the, the December meeting minutes, I know you mentioned uh, regarding the plan to follow up with council to discuss a more focused set of amendments to the preservation code, generally consistent with, uh, you know, prior direction from council, um, and then also ask council if they agree with the commission's recommendations about moving forward uh, on addressing the code. Um, and um, you know, I think it sounds like he's still working on finding a time to have that discussion with, with council. Um, at an upcoming meeting, and um, you know, I know uh, we've been able to fortunately uh, finally hire a couple of new planners uh, hmm. to fill a couple of a couple of our positions. They're they're currently in training, um, and that's that's good. We have a couple more positions to fill. Um, Glenn also mentioned that we're also looking at hiring a consultant firm to help with some. Planning projects that staff just hasn't been able to get to just due to resourcing limitations. Um, it's surprisingly it's been challenging trying to uh, get uh, uh, applicants that uh, and go through the recruitment process. Um, and so it's taken a lot longer than we anticipated to fill positions. So um, hopefully, with some of the new staff that we have, that like I said, it'll. As I think as Jennifer mentioned at the December meeting, it'll help free up some of her time so she can focus more on preservation related matters. So but that's about the extent of my comments on the code amendment. So okay. Fair enough. Commissioner Barnett, you had a question. And just to clarify, Brian, it just might have been a word or two here or there, but um, it's my understanding that the commission didn't have any specific recommendations with respect to the code. We had a healthy discussion okay. with the city's attorney, city attorney, and the, you were there for part of that, I know, uh, and the mayors and the mayor and the other council members that were there. And and then it just kind of stopped because right. the city attorney realized he's got to, they have to go back to square one and see, well, in light of what we heard, what do you want to do? So and I have to be careful saying that we have any recommendations. Right. I know there was a discussion at the December meeting kind of about, if, and I think, Glenn kind of laid out well, what's your maybe your top priorities for code amendments if if in fact no, yeah. no. Yeah. no there we, was we, that we, we talked we about that about top priority for code amendments well for for our whole agenda but what was specifically what was discussed was was peeling out the demolition portion of for discussion of, for and to act on that piece to try to make a rather than a broad brush all these different things, the overlay districts so on and so forth, just peel out the demolition ordinance piece and try to act specifically on that uh, as, a, as a commission to try to get something moving because the bigger picture was too overwhelming for the reasons that you brought forth and, and getting council involved and so on. So those bigger pictures, it, that, that's still a part of our, our, the demolition ordinance would still be part of our retreat, but we'd like to get moving on that. But that's that's been identified as probably the most uh, highest priority for the commission. And then the other piece to act technically, to truly make a, a, something happen. And the other pieces are a little bit more waiting on the broader discussion of the retreat. So uh, just, No, just the city's. Attorney. Should we have our own council? I don't think the city's going to fund that. 
Well, uh, I mean, me. as, re as requested, you know, the commission can request that a representative from the city attorney's office attend the meeting. Uh, if there is legal matters to consider, yeah. I know obviously we have a regular uh, member of the city attorney's office attend the planning and zoning commission meetings um, just because of land use matters and quasi-judicial decisions that are made. Um, but if there is a legal-related discussion, we can certainly request that a, you know, the city attorney's office attend a particular meeting. And, uh, well, I, uh, I asked the question, I'm a lawyer, by the way, with 60 years of experience. And uh, from what I... Uh, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> I already have a conflict if I were to do that. But... Uh, and that's my point. And it sounds to me like there is a lot of law-related subject matter that comes before this commission, and that's not surprising at all. And even if you needed a lawyer who is volunteering, who you're not going to pay, to have a lawyer uh, responsible to this commission who has no conflicts or potential conflicts. Uh, I guess that comes to the point of a suggestion on my part. And I suspect that within the community, you could find a lawyer who would have no conflicts and, and representing only this commission. This commission has, it's obvious to me, it's my first, <laughs> first time I've been here. Uh, this commission has a large circle of legal matters which in which uh, it could have conflicts of interest with the city. And uh, if you can find a volunteer, uh, even if you're not going to pay him, but whose loyalty uh, from a legal perspective is to the commission, it might be worthwhile. I don't know of any example where a board or commission has had an outside counsel that has not, you know, obviously where the board and commission has not been represented by the city attorney's office. Well, I can, I can give you a list of them all over the country. Well, I'm just, my example from obviously yeah. I've only worked here at the city for <laughs> a long time. So. Yeah. the landmark designation commission was formed and then became the historic preservation commission but just employing the kiss principle you know it sounds like we haven't needed a lawyer so far very often if at all so just using the kiss principle i'd say employing the city attorneys when we need them would probably be adequate i mean i, I don't know and finding volunteers it sounds easy but it is very hard so <laughs> if you can find a volunteer lawyer Good luck. But again, I don't see a huge need personally. I mean, I'm relatively new to the commission as oh, well. Man. You're 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 the newbie. You're second. I'm third in line. But I so I don't have a lot of history with it. But I mean, I don't think there's been a, a large need, right? Historically. This meeting was the late yep. meeting. Yes, but I mean, they're, they're they're dealt with well enough without uh, having a lawyer here to uh, right. oversee yep. it I specifically think. to. I mean, the times where we have needed the attorney's advice has been essentially limited to discussions about making changes to the city's ordinances, right? And and we're going to have the city attorney's going to be looking at that no matter what. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think that's Rick. Your point's probably probably true. I I don't know. I mean. I don't know that we've fa I've sat in on planning commission meetings and city council meetings where the, the attorney's been asked you know specific questions about land use and what the what the um, com various commissions have been uh, are able to do and not able to do and the limits of their authority and that sort of thing. I and in the entire time I've been on this commission, I don't know that I've ever had that kind of situation come up where the commission wasn't sure if they had 
the authority to make the decision that they were going to make. I think it's generally pretty clear. And, you know, we deal with complex issues, but in reality, it's, a, it's within a very narrow, you know, sort of bandwidth, right? Um, so I, I have not seen that in my experience. Fair point. Um, all right. Well, uh, so I think that the issue, if you, if you can just kind of communicate back, because it, to staff, um, to Jennifer and I guess Glenn, you know, if we can, if we can, for sure, have the demolition ordinance and a discussion of that on our next agenda, uh, regardless of where the um, where the retreat lands. We'd like to start talking about that sooner than later. And then the other bigger picture items can be on that retreat. Yes, I will pass that information along and I will make sure that they have my old research. So excellent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that just brings us to uh, general comments from HPC Commission. There's been a you know a decent amount of discussion here, which is which is healthy. Uh, if there's anything else anyone, uh, commissioners, would like to uh, put forth this evening before we retire, no? No? Okay. Uh, appreciate the, the, the comments and the conversation. Um, we do not have our city council representative here uh, with us tonight, so there will be no comments there. And that brings us to adjournment. <laughs> All right, a motion and a second. Um, and all in favor of adjournment, aye. say aye. We are adjourned. Uh, I believe that motion and second motion came from Commissioner Jacoby and second from Barnard. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks for your indulgence and uh, putting up with me this evening.